so when we think about this from the perspective of health, um, we often think about a doctor's office, we often think about a nurse or a hospital, but health is really a state of well-being and not just the absence of a disease. And that in, that's really informed by the context that we live in, um, that we work in, that we play in. Um, and when it comes to nature specifically, um, we know that it has effects on not only our physical health, so being that physically active, but our mental health, our social well-being, um, as well as the environmental um, uh, environment, uh, uh, health as well. Um, and so we know that research demonstrates uh, spending as, as little as uh, two hours a week uh, in uh, a nature in green space, uh, it's about 15 to 20 minutes a day, can uh, improve uh, self-reported health and well-being. Um, and that nature is an essential part of the public health infrastructure. Uh, being outside improves uh, uh, health outcomes. Uh, when we talk about physical activity, um, when people who are, live closer to green space are more likely to be physically active. Um, and physical activity is a mechanism to prevent uh, any sort of chronic disease, whether it's hypertension or obesity. Um, and um, it's also a way to really uh, protect our mental health. Um, so, for example, physical activity among older adults uh, is linked to delaying the onset of cognitive decline. And we know that that uh, group of, uh, of individuals was particularly impacted um, uh, by the pandemic. Um, and when we think about mental health outcomes, um, uh, it, it's, it's not just mood, it's not just stress. Um, but that psychological distress, there was a study out of Australia about, uh, of more than 45,000 people um, that, who lived closer uh, to green space, um, in particular the, the tree canopy coverage, were significantly linked to the experience of, of decreasing psychological uh, distress. So what does that mean for society in this context where, where we are experiencing a pandemic? Um, well, um, it's being outside uh, for a significant period of time was during this lockdown phase um, was sort of the, the last bastion of socialization. And we as uh, human beings are social, social creatures. Uh, we were struggling with a, a growing epidemic of loneliness and social isolation before the pandemic hit. Um, and it became even more important as we were able to physically distance, parks became even more important as we were able to physically distance outside while still being within a safe uh, environment. Um, and it's not just sort of experienced on an individual level. We know that social capital, perceived social capital in, in communities, you know, 27% of that is attributable to differences among parks. Um, and these, these factors, as we think about not just our individual health and our social health, but the environmental health, um, is that parks, green space are really helpful, not just are, are really helpful in, from the perspective of air quality, uh, improving air quality, and as well as uh, serving as a way to, to reduce urban heat island effects. Um, a study here uh, outside of uh, Baltimore, in Baltimore and in DC, found that um, parks were about 17 degrees cooler uh, in surrounding neighborhoods. And that, that cooling effect actually extended um, up to half a mile uh, outside of the, that park area. So, you know, we've laid out sort of study over study um, and, and really identified that this has uh, an impact on health and well-being. But this is also a, a factor of equity and, and justice. Um, uh, nationally, uh, we did some analysis in-house in our organization and found um, that uh, parks uh, that serving primarily non-white populations are half the size of uh, those serving majority white population and are about five times as crowded. Um, and so that, that equity piece of it really has to be central in how we're approaching access, how we're approaching quality of these spaces, as well as how we're approaching inclusiveness, um, as was referred to, to earlier today. We know that parks are going to be, uh, parks and green space are going to be critical um, when we think about recovery, when we think about resiliency, um, and really are these factors that, that unite us as we, um, as we spend time in nature to, to soothe and console us in a rather distressing time. We see now more than ever land being used um, uh, being as busy on a Tuesday morning as it is on a Saturday afternoon. Um, and I've heard that directly from park directors. Um, 
and in that context, we have to understand that land and, and parks and green space is an essential part of public health infrastructure. We have to get away from a philosophy of nice to have and really embed it in a philosophy of a must have to ensure healthy, um, livable neighborhoods for generations to come.